I have a fun project, or oh, what I think is a fun project for you guys, and a useful one. And it's going to be Guess the Number, a little game that you can play, show your friends, um, and demonstrates a few of the key principles that we've been learning about, most uh, namely while loops. So what we're going to do is, for this Guess the Number project, we'll initialize a random number. We've just learned about random numbers. We'll take input from a user, which we've done previously, for their guess. So they'll enter their guess of, of which number uh, we're trying to get them to guess. We'll then determine if the user guess matches the random number or not and provide, provide feedback. Their, your number was too high, too low, that was the correct guess, etc. When they get the correct guess, we will exit our while loop. So let's go over here to PyCharm. And I've got uh, our, our uh, program open from previously. Let's create a new project. And we don't need to create a new project necessarily for every everything that we do. We could have, uh, we could have, for example, a project and just have a bunch of Python files underneath. Um, I may do that here for certain things, but we are going to, for now, just to get you more familiar with creating projects in PyCharm, we'll create a new one and we'll name it, um, guess the number and create. We'll create it in this window. I don't need, well, let me show you what would happen if we did new window. So see, it cre just creates a new window. Um, so now what I'm going to do is close out the old window. But what I could have done was create in this window, and then it would have just replaced it. So I've got a new window here. Let's right click on our project, create a new Python file with the name, guess the number. So I've got our steps copied. Let me paste those in. Okay, that's what we need to do. So we'll call this step one, step two, step three, and step four. So for step one, let's initialize our random number. Remember, we always need to import random. So as long as this comes before our other code where we reference random, that's okay. Best practice is to have it at the very tippy top of our file. Um, I'm going to put it there above our comment here. And let's, actually that brings me to a good question. Is this okay to go here? Let's see, what do we got? Need our parameters again. One, five. Let's run our current file. Well, we're not doing anything. Yeah, that works. So it didn't throw an error. Um, just want to make sure I wasn't misspeaking. I've always put it at the at the top and with the assumption that it could be anywhere, anywhere um, in our code as long as it's above what's referenced, and that proved to be true. Below our comment worked just fine. So what we're doing is let's initialize a random number. Let's say random number is assigned the value of random.randint. We'll go between one and um, 50 for now. And then let's, so that's done. Step one is done. Let's take input from the user for their guess. And we need to do this in our while loop because every time they guess, we're going to give them another chance to guess until they get it right. So we need to repeat some block of code an undefined or undetermined number of times while they guess. So while, now what is our condition going to be here? What can we say, 
Well, what? Keep repeating the loop. Well, well, the guess is incorrect. So what we can do is we can create a um, num uh, not a number, a, a variable, which we could use as uh, correct guess, and we're going to assign that to the value of false. Um, or we could do incorrect guess and assign it to true. Let's do that. That makes a little more sense to my brain. So incorrect guess. We're going to say, we're going to just assume that's true. And then we say, well, incorrect guess, which is true right now. So this will iterate at least once. And we're going to say user guess equals input enter guess. This will prompt the user for their input. And what I'm going to do is translate this um, to an integer. So we're going to use that int, int method we've learned about. Okay. Now that takes care of step two. We've taken input from the user for their guess. Um, so we're still in our while loop. So this will iterate once. Um, let's check to see if they are correct. So if user guess equals random number, then let's print um, correct. Okay. And then let's break out of our loop because they've guessed correctly, so we don't need to run it anymore. Elif user guess, uh, let's say is less than random number, print too low, try again. And finally, the only other scenario here is if their user guess is uh, greater than our random number. So we're just going to print too high because that's the only other scenario that remains. Try again. Okay. And let's see if this runs. Run our current file. Enter guess. Let's say five. Too low. Try again. Six, too low, try again. Seven, too low, try again. Eight, too low, try again. Nine, too low, try again. Okay. I forgot this was between one and 50. I thought this was between one and 10, so I was incrementing by one. Let's go a little bit higher. 30, too low still. 40, uh, again, too low. 45? Wow, that was a good guess. Uh, it only took me like eight guesses, but I eventually got it. Um, so correct, and we finished our code. We hit this uh, break loop, uh, uh, break point, excuse me. Uh, let's try again. Let's say 25, too high. Okay, 15, too high, 10, 5, too low, 7. Okay, so it was 7. So a pretty simple program. Um, what if we wanted to add, uh, how many guesses it takes us? So we could add a counter here and we could say num guesses or or maybe attempts. I like that. We'll say zero attempts. But every time they have a guess, let's increment that. Attempts plus equals attempts plus one. So we're incrementing that. And we can say we can make Let's see, if user guess is equal to the random number, let's print, let's make it an F string. Correct, you guessed the number in attempts, attempts. So let's run it. Okay, 25. Oh, wow, it was 25. Yeah, that's gotta be some sort of record. 
let's try again. Well, it, it worked because I guessed it in one attempt, but let's let's try again where we got a few more attempts. I'm just starting in the middle because that's logical. 15, too high, 10, too low, 12, 13. Okay, five attempts. One, two, three, four, five. You guessed it in five attempts. So, um, pretty nifty random number generator slash uh, guess the number. We did that in 25 lines of code. Actually, if we take away all of our description here, um, you know, 20 lines of code. You can you can start to see how with the correct logic applied together, we can make some pretty decent programs. Um, so I hope that was interesting to you and, and you can see some use cases for our while loop. Um, user input's a great use case for while loops, um, getting user input until conditions are met. Um, we used our random random number generator, importing random. We've got our if, lf, else. We use a break statement. Uh, F string. So lots of little things starting to come together to make more uh, comprehensive programs. I wanted to uh, make a quick note here before moving on that we don't actually use this incorrect guess variable to terminate the loop. It's just always true, which does work and is fine. And we have our break to terminate the loop. I wanted to show you another way of doing this. Instead of break, we could just change incorrect guess to false. And that way, once this code executes, if we have the correct guess, this will now be false and it will it will stop termination. Uh, excuse me, it will terminate the while loop. It will stop iterating through the while loop. So let's run that and I wanna show you. So if our guess is 25, 15, 10, 12, 11. So it also exited the while loop there. Um, so I just wanted to show you that that by changing our uh, value here of our uh, statement to keep the while loop going, changing that to false, we can end the, end the um, iteration of the while loop that way as well. And the second thing, I realized that we haven't talked about what this A and B are here. You'll notice I can't change them. I'm trying to click and drag my mouse over them. Um, but it doesn't actually do anything. It, it goes all the way over here once I get to another character. Um, that just shows you that the, the method randint takes uh, values A and B. So literally within this method, it assigns those values to A and B, as we saw, and, Py, and PyCharm just displays that for us. So as we saw when we were at the terminal, and we did Python... Uh, import random dir random and then we did help on uh, random dot rand int then we saw it, it names these a and b so pycharm it just sees under the hood like that and it knows rand int names these a and b so it's just it's just spitting that out for us to make make it easier for us to see that so that we know so that's what A and B is. It's not anything that we've input. They're not variables that we've input. It's what randint, uh, randint uses. So wanted to point that out. Okay, now we will see you in the next video.